Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children, and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me, come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Redeem me, O Lord, the God of truth. I will be glad and rejoice in your love, for you saw my affliction and knew the anguish of my soul. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hands. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. Praise be to the Lord, for he showed his wonderful love to me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord.
Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray together the collect of the day. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to us when we go astray from your ways, and bring us again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith, to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday in Lent is from the 28th chapter of Genesis. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth, with its top reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. And in you, that is, through your descendant, all people on earth will be blessed. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel, which means house of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. The epistle is from the fifth chapter of Romans. St. Paul writes, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his Son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way he asked them, Who do people say I am? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, Who do you say I am? Peter answered, You are the Christ. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world, yet loses his own soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Spirit. Amen. Our text is today's Old Testament reading, the story of Jacob's Ladder. Human beings are funny creatures. It is one of the great paradoxes of humanity that even though all of us go through life knowing mentally that one day we will die, yet emotionally we seem to think that day will never come for us. But then something happens that brings the reality of death so close that we can no longer gloss over it. The death of a loved one, some serious trouble or danger, perhaps a terminal illness for us or a loved one, with the prediction of only a short time to live. This past year, all of us have been confronted daily with the reality of death due to the coronavirus pandemic. All of these awful things bring home to us the harsh reality of our mortality. All of these awful things can make us feel alone and afraid. In our text, Jacob was alone and afraid as he camped out that night at Bethel. It reminds me of one summer nearly 40 years ago when I was working as an archaeologist in the Middle East at a site not too far from Bethel. Because of my fair skin, I was assigned to the crew excavating ancient underground cave-like tombs. One afternoon, just as we were about to quit for the day, we discovered several fully intact skeletons. That's actually quite rare because over the centuries, the bones have usually been disturbed. They asked for volunteers to spend the night camping out in the desert to guard the tomb. And I and another fellow foolishly thought it would be a fun adventure. But after a few hours, all alone, in the dark, trying to sleep next to skeletons on the rock floor of an ancient tomb cemetery in the middle of the desert, expecting grave robbers to possibly come and attack us during the night, it no longer seemed like a fun adventure, but a frightening nightmare. Jacob wasn't sleeping out in the desert for fun or adventure, but he was all alone on a long, hard, dangerous journey. You may recall how Jacob had cheated his brother Esau out of his birthright and inheritance, and how Esau plotted to get revenge on Jacob by killing him. So the boy's mother, Rebecca, arranged to send Jacob away to stay with his uncle, her brother Laban. And so now Jacob is off on a long, hard, dangerous journey, all alone, or so he thinks. For in a dream at Bethel, the Lord reassures Jacob that he is not alone. First of all, there are the angels of God, ascending and descending, on Jacob's ladder, going up to God with the needs of Jacob, coming down from God to watch over Jacob, help and protect him. And the Lord God himself appears at the top of Jacob's ladder. I am the Lord, he declares. I will be with you and will watch over you wherever you go. I will not leave you. Do you sometimes feel like your life is a long, hard, dangerous journey? Do you sometimes feel like Jacob did that night at Bethel, alone and afraid? Remember the angels of God ascending and descending on Jacob's ladder, going up to God with your needs, coming down from God to watch over you, to help and protect you. Remember the promise of the Lord God standing at the top of Jacob's ladder, for that promise is also for you. I am the Lord. I will be with you and will watch over you wherever you go. I will not leave you. And remember and take comfort from Jacob's ladder. 
What is the significance for you of Jacob's ladder? Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Remember and take comfort from Jacob's ladder because Jacob's ladder is a symbol of your Savior. I am the way, the truth, and the life, he proclaims. Jesus is the way to heaven, symbolized in Jacob's dream by a ladder reaching up to heaven. Jesus is Jacob's ladder. Jacob's ladder is Jesus. Imagine that ladder laid down so that it becomes a bridge. I tell you the truth, Jesus says, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. Think of a huge gorge or canyon. On one side is death. On the other side, eternal life. On one side is damnation. On the other side, salvation. On one side is hell. On the other side is heaven. But how will you cross over from death to eternal life? How will you cross over from damnation to salvation? How will you cross over from hell to heaven? I tell you the truth. Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. As St. Paul says in today's epistle reading from Romans, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for the ungodly. God shows his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We have been justified by his blood. Christ died for you to pay for your sins and earn your pardon by his blood. That is what God's promise to Jacob in our text means when he says, through your descendant, all people on earth will be blessed. According to his human nature, Jesus Christ is the promised descendant of Jacob. And through the blood of Jesus Christ comes the blessing of salvation for the whole world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Through your descendant, all people on earth will be blessed. Trust in Jesus, for you are blessed through him. He is your Savior. You have peace with God through your Lord Jesus Christ. Peace with God means that there is no more punishment to suffer. Peace with God means that there is no more price to pay. Because Jesus bore it all for you and paid it all for you in his body on the cross. I tell you the truth, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Jesus is Jacob's ladder. Jacob's ladder is Jesus. He is the means by which you will ascend to heaven. I am the resurrection and the life, he declares. Whoever believes in me, even though he dies, yet shall he live. Death is no longer the bitter end, but the new beginning. Jacob declared at Bethel, this is the gate of heaven. And through faith in Jesus, that is what death becomes for you. Not the fearful end, but the glorious gate of heaven. 
I read an article recently that poignantly recounted how one of our soldiers in the Middle East beautifully expressed this comforting confidence in his last telephone call home before a big battle. Don't worry, honey, he told his wife. If I get killed, I'm going to heaven, and I'll see you there. Either way, I'm going home. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. Death is now the gate of heaven. And like that soldier said so beautifully, we are going home. When I served as pastor at Sylvan Grove, Kansas, the old church register listed the cause for those who had died. The entry for a 10-year-old boy in the late 1800s caught my eye. Under cause of death, it had Genesis 28, the story of Jacob's Ladder. And then in the pastor's beautiful German script, it said, He rested his head on a rock and closed his eyes. There was another column with an explanation. The boy had been thrown from a wagon and was killed instantly when he hit his head on a rock. So like Jacob, he rested his head on a rock and closed his eyes. Your death also will be like the sleep of Jacob. Like that rock under Jacob's head, your death might be hard and painful. But when the sleep of death comes, like Jacob, you will see God. Only it won't be a dream. In fact, it will be more real than anything you have ever experienced. And the angels of God will carry your soul up Jacob's ladder into paradise. And so you shall be asleep in Jesus forever with the Lord. As the prayer says, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And if I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Guide me safely through the night and wake me with the morning light. Weeping may remain for the night, says the psalm, but joy comes in the morning. The night of this world may be full of weeping, but joy is coming in the morning of eternal life. When you lie down in the sleep of death, the Lord will take your soul and you will awaken with joy in paradise. For death is for you the gate of heaven, because we are climbing Jacob's ladder. Amen.
of salvation. Let us pray that we may keep a faithful Lent, as through repentance and reception of the Lord's gospel and sacraments, he draws us closer to himself. For forgiveness for the many times we have denied Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Turn us from sin to faithfulness, from disobedience to service, from coldness to love, and so prepare us to celebrate the death and resurrection of Christ our Savior. Merciful Father, hear our prayer. For grace to repent of those habits of sin which mean spiritual death, and by God's grace with prayer and self-discipline to overcome them, let us pray to the Lord. Give us grace to grow in holiness, to deny ourselves, to take up the cross, the cross of Christ, and follow him. Merciful Father, hear our prayer. For the one holy Christian and apostolic church, for all pastors and missionaries, especially Cindy Rucka, who was sponsored by our synod in the Czech Republic, that in faithful witness we may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lead us into all truth and give us grace to speak your words of pardon and peace. Merciful Father, hear our prayer. For those who make, administer, and judge our laws, that all in authority, that our nation may be ordered in justice and mercy, prosperity and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. May the wounded hands of Jesus bring his healing touch to our troubled world. Merciful Father, hear our prayer. For all who suffer and mourn, let us pray to the Lord. May the blood and water flowing from Jesus' side soothe their pain and comfort their grief. Merciful Father, hear our prayer. For those who are weighed down with the burdens of life and feel that God is far from them, let us pray to the Lord. May the shoulders of Jesus, which bore for us the cross, bear the burden of their agony. Merciful Father, hear our prayer. For us in our times of doubt and despair, when we are tempted to give up the way of the cross, let us pray to the Lord. May the pierced feet of Jesus walk beside us through life and death to the gate of glory. Merciful Father, hear our prayer. And finally, in some moments of quietness, we hold before you, merciful Father, in silent prayer, the longings and hopes of our own hearts and those who have asked us to remember them in our prayers. Merciful Father, hear our prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, grant us grace so to pass through this holy season of Lent, that meditating upon our Lord's suffering and death for our salvation, and truly lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness before you, we may receive from you, the God of all mercy, full forgiveness and pardon of our sins. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May God the Father, who does not despise the broken spirit, give to you a contrite heart. Amen. May Christ, who bore our sins in his body on the cross, heal you by his wounds. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who speaks to us words of pardon and peace, give you grace to grow in holiness. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
let us pray to the Father through his Son, who suffered on the cross for the redemption of the world, in the words that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Guide us, O Lord, in this our earthly pilgrimage, that we who are strangers and sojourners in this perilous world may, by your grace, at last enter our true homeland, the kingdom of heaven, where we will live in eternal joy and glory, through the merits of our Savior, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.